Welcome back to our daily Bible reading as we're going through the scriptures. And our reading this week is going to take us from Genesis 23 through Genesis 35. And, and as you read this week, this is what I want you to take note of. First of all, you're going to see the end of a love story, Abraham's love for his wife, Sarah. And you're going to see it the way he buries her with some complications, but take note of the care that he takes. And then now Abraham needs to find a wife for his son, Isaac, because the promise of God is he'd be the father of many nations. And so there's better be a son. And so what happens here is that there's going to be an oath that the servant will make to Abraham. And then the servant will also share a prayer as he's looking for what woman, distant relative, could become the wife to Isaac. And he wants to make sure God is directing this whole thing. So Rebecca, she's a distant relative. And it's going to be fascinating how it becomes clear she's God's choice. And it all comes from her response to the request for a drink of water by the servant. Well, it's going to end up basically uh, ending up with the answer to the prayer, and she's the one. Now, remember the name of Rebecca's uh, brother, Laban, because he's going to come into play later as this genealogy is worked out. Well, after hearing the whole story, that is, the servant shares the whole story with Rebecca's father and brother, uh, both the father, whose name was Bethuel, and her brother Laban give permission for her to be released to become the wife of um, Isaac. Now, of course, the question today is, well, how did Rebecca feel about that? Well, we don't know. It was a custom of the day for the father primarily to choose the husband of his daughter. But we do know that clearly says that Isaac loved her, that he really loved her. Well, then Abraham, meanwhile, after finding a wife for his son, takes on another wife named Keturah, and they have more children. But the story of the narrative you're going to find stays with Isaac, who is the promised child. He's the one that the nation's going to be built under. Now, remember, Abraham kind of rushed things with Sarah before the birth of Isaac. And remember, Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham to give birth to the son, thinking they could figure out how to fulfill God's promises. We have a tendency to do that, you know. And so she bears a son. Remember, his name is Ishmael. And, and God does bless Ishmael. He becomes the father of a nation. Of course, that nation will be in war with Isaac's genealogy for, well, to this day. Well, Isaac and Rebekah, after some difficulty getting pregnant, well, she finally have twins. And Esau is going to be the elder, and Jacob will be the younger of the two. And this is where you're going to find that Esau, the elder, firstborn, he sells his birthright to his younger brother, Jacob, who's a little bit conniving here for a pot of stew. Now, remember, the birthright was given to the firstborn, and that meant you received a double inheritance, and the name of the family was carried through you. It was a big deal. At least Jacob realized that. And I guess for Esau, it wasn't worth more than a pot of stew. Well, finally, the family's hit by a famine, but God warns Isaac not to be rushing down to Egypt like his father Abraham had done. And God reiterates here the promise that he made to Abraham, but now he makes it to, to Isaac, that Isaac, you're going to be the father of many nations and that God's going to bring blessing to this whole world through his seed uh, of Isaac. But like his father, Isaac has a weakened faith at times, and he lies just like his father did down in Egypt. Here, Isaac lies to the king, the local king of that area named Abimelech, and he says that Rebekah is his sister. He does that because Rebekah is beautiful, and he's fearful as his father was fearful about his mother Sarah being beautiful, is that he would be killed and that his wife would be taken by this king Abimelech. But he's caught. You'll see how he's caught by uh, the, the, the king of Bimelech himself. And yet, even with all of this, God still blesses him. Now, there's then an argument over two wells and some water rights. But the next section really has to do with Jacob's big lie and deception. Now, this is when Jacob and his mother, Rebekah, are in cahoots because now they want to steal the blessing of the father, that is Isaac's blessing, to Jacob. Normally, that blessing would go to the firstborn. 
So as you will read, you will see the, the, the deception, what they do. They make Jacob smell like, look like, pretend he's Esau, bringing uh, Isaac's favorite stew. And because Isaac's uh, eyesight has become really poor, he can't tell the difference, not initially. So he gives his blessing to uh, Jacob. And so Jacob, whose name, by the way, means heel grabber because he followed Esau, his older brother, at birth, holding his heel. And so maybe that is a sign that he would be a bit conniving and deceptive. This is going to come back, by the way, and burn Jacob later on. Well, basically, uh, God still reminds him of the promise because after Esau finds out that that Jacob received the blessing, the endorsement of the father, Esau's ticked. And he's going to kill his brother Jacob. So Jacob has to flee. Well, as he flees, that's when he has that dream of the ladder. And that ladder is with the uh, angels going up and down. It was God communicating to Jacob that even though he had deceived his brother, <laughs> what a sinner, but the fact that God still would bless him. Because God's covenant was uh, unconditional didn't really base on what Jacob did or didn't do. It's something that God did because of who God was and who God is. Well, now, so Jacob flees, and as he flees, he's going to meet a woman named Rachel. Now, remember Laban? Rachel was Laban's youngest daughter. Now, she's the pretty one because she had an older sister named Leah that apparently had some eye problems. Well, Jacob falls in love with Rachel and agrees to work for Laban for seven years so that Rachel could become his wife. But seven years later, Laban pulls off smoking mirrors and Jacob wakes up out of the darkness of that area with Leah as his wife, and he's really ticked. But they negotiate this thing and he works another seven years so he could have Rachel as well. So he's gonna have both sisters as his wife. But you see again, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Jacob, as he would be deceiving others, here was the big deception that he suffered. Well, both of these wives are going to help, with some help of their handmaid servants, they're going to find, will bear 12 sons to Jacob. And those 12 sons will eventually become the fathers of the 12 tribes of Jacob or the 12 tribes of Israel. So God blesses Jacob, you're going to find out. And he leaves Laban. Now, Laban's not too happy about this because he's got a good thing going. I mean, Joseph, uh, uh, Isaac is being blessed. I'm sorry, Jacob is being blessed. And uh, Laban's enjoying the blessing. So basically, he does not want to lose. He does not want Jacob or his two daughters to leave. But they worked that all out. You'll see it an interesting thing. As they leave, Rachel has under her saddle the household idols. And you wonder, what kind of pagan is Rachel? Well, she's not a pagan. The custom of the day was whoever had those idols, that gave you leverage for your personal inheritance. So Rachel, knowing her dad was a conniver, she wanted to secure the inheritance of Leah and herself, and that's why she has these idols and she's sneaking away with them. Well, after making peace with Laban, you're going to find that Jacob returns home. But home means he's going to have to see Esau again. Remember when he left Esau, Esau wanted him dead. But apparently God had also blessed Esau's life. And because of that, the brother's heart was softened and they basically become at peace with one another. But then there's more trouble in the family. Dinah, you're going to read, is the daughter of Leah. And she is raped by one of the local princes of that area. Well, the brothers are really ticked. Uh, and so they run a deception. Uh, again, this deceiving thing runs in this uh, Jacob's family. And they bring vengeance upon the whole city. And they do it in such a way that is very, very painful for us men. And you'll read about it yourself. Well, then Jacob has to move because of what they did to the city. The city is not happy with Jacob's family, so he's got to flee again. And he goes to a place called Bethel. And it's at Bethel you're going to see that his name is going to be changed from Jacob, heel grabber, to Israel, God's defender. Well, at that point, you're going to see we'll pick up next week's reading and the drama will continue.